Lesson 2 on Humility One of the elders said, We need humility more than anything else, and to be prepared to say, Forgive me, upon hearing any word. All temptations of the enemy are destroyed by humility. Let us examine the strength of this saying. Why does the elder say that we need humility more than anything else and not we need temperance more than anything else? Since the apostle says, everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Why did he not say we need the fear of God more than anything else? Since the Holy Scripture says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The scripture also says, By the fear of the Lord, everyone departs from evil. Why did he not say we need almsgiving or faith more than anything else? Since the scripture says, Through almsgiving and faith, sins are purged. Moreover, the apostle says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If it is impossible to please God without faith and almsgiving, and if sins are purged through faith, if one can depart from evil by fearing the Lord, and if the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and again if the person that struggles practices self-restraint, why does he say we need humility more than anything else? Why did he leave out all the other virtues that are so necessary? The elder wants to show us that neither the fear of God or almsgiving or faith or temperance or any other virtue can be achieved without humility. This is why he says we need humility more than anything else to be ready to say forgive me whenever anything is said to us. All the temptations of the enemy are destroyed by humility. Brethren, can you see how great the power of humility is? Do you see how effective it is to say, forgive me? Why then is the devil called adversary as well as enemy? He is called enemy because he hates man and goodness and is insidious. He is called adversary because he tries to prevent any good thing. If somebody wants to pray, he opposes him, placing obstacles in his way through bad memories, by controlling his news, and through despondency. If somebody wants to give alms, he holds him back through avarice and miserliness. If somebody wants to keep vigil, he will stand in the way using lethargy and indolence. Simply put, he opposes every good thing we undertake. This is why he is not only called enemy, but adversary too. However, every action of the adversary is destroyed by humility. Humility is very great. Indeed, each of the saints walked in humility and shortened his journey by working hard, as it is written, Look on my humility and my pain and forgive all my sins. Humility alone can gain us entrance, as the elder Abba John said, but it will take longer. Let us therefore humble ourselves for a little while, and we will be saved. If we cannot work hard because of our weakness, let us try to humble ourselves. I believe in the mercy of God, that through the small effort made with humility, we shall also find ourselves in the position of those saints who labored and worked hard for the love of God. Yes, we are weak and cannot work hard, but can we not humble ourselves? Brethren, the person that has humility is fortunate and blessed. Humility is great. Quite rightly, a certain saint marked out the person who has true humility by saying, Humility does not allow you to be angry or provocative. This seems strange since humility is opposed only to vanity, and it seems that it only protects man from that. However, one can be angry over money or food. How then can it be said that humility does not allow you to be angry or provocative? Humility is great, as we have said, 
and is able to draw God's grace to the soul. Thus, this grace of God comes and protects the soul from those other two great passions. For what can be more serious than being angry or provocative towards your neighbor? Evegrio said, It is totally foreign to a monk to become angry. Indeed, if he is not immediately protected by humility, he will gradually reach a demonic state, disturbing others and being disturbed himself. This is why he says, humility does not allow you to be angry or provocative. Why do I say that humility protects one from these two great passions? It protects the soul from every passion and temptation. When St. Anthony saw all the snares of the devil laid out, he signed and asked God, Who then can go through all these? What did God reply? Humility can go through all of them. He added something wonderful that they cannot even touch it. Do you see the strength and grace of this virtue, brother? Indeed, nothing is more powerful than humility. Nothing can overcome it. If some misfortune should happen to a humble person, he immediately considers himself responsible. He blames himself immediately by saying that he deserves what has happened to him. He will not tolerate somebody else taking the blame. He will not tolerate the placing of a responsibility for misfortune on another. Thus he overcomes it undisturbed, without sorrow and in total peace. This is why he is not angry or provocative, and why the saint rightly said we need humility more than anything else. There are two kinds of humility, just as there are two kinds of pride. The first kind of pride is when a man despises his brother, when he humiliates him as though he is nothing and considers himself to be greater than he. If this man does not recover swiftly and does not take care to try to disentangle himself from this state, he gradually reaches the second kind of pride, which is pride towards God, when he attributes everything he achieves to himself and not to God. Indeed, brethren, I know somebody who reached this pitiable situation. At first, when one of the brothers was speaking to him, he would spit on him and say, who is this? Nobody is worthy but for Zosimas and his disciples. Then he began to humiliate them too and say, Nobody is worthy but for Makarios. After a little while he started saying, Who is Makarios? Nothing. Nobody is worthy but for Basil and Gregory. A little later he started to humble them as well by saying, Who are Basil and Gregory? Nobody is worthy but for Peter and Paul. I said to him, Really, brother, you would try to degrade them too. Believe me, after some time he began to say, Who are Peter and Paul? Nothing. Only the Holy Trinity is worthy. Following this, he also became arrogant towards God, and he fell from the faith. This is why, brethren, we must struggle against this first pride so that we do not soon fall into total pride. There is a worldly pride and a monastic one. Worldly pride is when someone is arrogant towards his brother because he is richer, more handsome, better dressed, and more generous than his brother is. When we see ourselves being vainglorious about these things, meaning that our monastery is bigger or richer, or that we have more brothers than others, we should appreciate that we are in the midst of worldly pride. It also often happens that somebody is vain about something natural, for example, that he has a good voice and can chant well in church, or that he is skilled and can work with care, or that he serves others well. All these are more modest than those mentioned earlier, but these also are a form of worldly pride. On the other hand, monastic pride is when one is proud because of keeping the vigil, fasting, or because of one's piety, virtuous life, and importance. 
it might also be that somebody humbles himself in order to be glorified. All this is part of monastic pride. Of course, if we cannot be free from pride, it is better to be proud of the monastic things than of the worldly ones. We have described the first and second kind of pride. Likewise, we have explained what worldly and what monastic pride are. Let us now learn about the two kinds of humility. The first kind of humility is to consider one's brother to be wiser than oneself and to surpass one in all things. Simply, as the saint said, to be under everyone. The second kind of humility is to attribute all our achievements to God. This is the perfect humility of the saints. It grows naturally within the soul through the keeping of the commandments. In order to clarify this, let us take the example of trees. When they have much fruit, the branches are bent downwards and sometimes break. The branch without fruit is raised up and grows upwards. In some kinds of trees, no fruit is produced until the branches grow upwards, but if somebody takes a stone and binds it to a branch and pulls it down, then the branch will bear fruit. It is similar with a soul. When it humbles itself, it bears fruit, and the more fruit it bears, the humbler the soul becomes. The more the saints approach God, the more they see themselves as sinners. I remember once when we were talking about humility, and one of the leading lights of Gaza heard us saying, the more one approaches God, the more one sees himself as a sinner.